Hi, this is my telescope project. So I first learned about this when I saw John Dobson's video, where he made a mirror in this uh, one and a half hour video, and which is interesting, so I wanted to do it. And so my goal is to make, uh, as my first mirror, I'll make a 160 millimeter diameter F8 mirror. And so my main reference would be John Dobson's video and the um, stellafane.org and where they have a detailed guide on the mirror making process. So I started this project at October, but I've been very slow and didn't really do much in this few months, but I will explain what I have done. First is I made two plaster discs, which will be the tool you use to grind the mirror. And so as you can see, I have two here and you made these by you have your mirror and you wrap a barrier. I use cereal box paper around and you pour plaster on it. And so at the end you will have a plaster disc that that is like the same diameter as your mirror and so my first one is horrible so because um it's full of bubbles and and it'll be just annoying to work with my second one was a lot better and it barely has any bubble and as you can see this one is a little bit different in color because i waterproof it and you do this by covering it with epoxy. I use these epoxy, which is mainly this, which is the five minute epoxy, meaning I have five minutes to work with. And so the back and the side, I use this five minute epoxy. But at the front, what you have to do is you stick towels on it. And these, I, I use these um, hexagon towels, but using five minutes is not enough. Like um, I try to use five minutes epoxy and ended end up having like a really a bad alignment of the towels and I have a lot of gaps so at the end I have to buy this 90 minutes epoxy so I can fill in the gaps and you can see as you can see I number all of these because I need a systematic way to fix my tool and the next thing I did which I did yesterday was making the bevel on the edge of the glass you want to do this you want to do this because uh, having a uh, sharp edge makes the glass chip really easily and so I made the bevel with this um, knife polishing tool and just like grind it and so on cellophane.org they they said uh, the bevel should be around like uh, three millimeter the size but I mine is only around two millimeter but I think it should be okay it's it's a small mirror and so other stuff that I brought is, uh, the most important is probably your grit. The next thing I brought is the spray bottle, which is so you can keep your tool and your glass wet at all time to prevent any dust from flying and, and having you breathe in. And also I brought two buckets. So these red buckets, one bucket is for washing. So every now and then you want to wash your glass, your mirror, and your tool so you wash all the mud away and so you can put in fresh grits and so this is this and also the second one is sort of like my workstation and as you can see i have little little plastic pieces here and and so i can have my tool fit i can have my tool fit really nicely on onto the top of the bucket and i can grind on this quite easily Next thing I bought is the filler gauge, which is this thing. As you can see, it's made out of many blades, and each of these blades is a different thickness. And so you do this because you want to, when you grind your mirror, you want to have a curve, and the how deep that curve they call it sagitta, and and so you can have a straight edge on top of your mirror, on top of your mirror, and you find the right combination of the different thickness uh, of these blades. So in my case, I, my, the, the, the sagitta, so the how deep the curve for my mirror is 1.25 millimeters. So you, I find the right combination, have a straight edge, and you, what you do, you try to slide the blades through it, and if you can slide it through with a little bit of friction, then it shows you that your, your, the depth of your curve is just right. But I'm not sure if I actually need need this. In John Dobson's video, they they measure like the focal length and, and just like 
as another way to check how deep your kerf is. They, they simply uh, spray water on it so it's shiny enough to reflect light. And, so, and, you, and they point the mirror to the sun and see uh, where the focal point is. So I'm not sure if I actually need this, but I think I'll try both. So this will be rough grinding for the first time.
and as you can see the surface is now very um matte has a matte finish instead of like it was like shiny and if if you can see i think we can see that there is a small gap in the middle there so we have made some progress mm, yeah i think i think that looks pretty good so now that I'm done with my first round of grinding of, I think roughly 40 minutes, I want to see um, what's, the, what's my saji turner now. Um, so I'm going to use my feeler gauge and the straight edge. Here I have... 25, which is 0 0.25 millimeter. Uh, even now, it slides quite well, quite well through them. Well, actually, I don't know. So I think I haven't grinded like quite evenly around the whole, the whole um whole three three hundred sixty degree. Like I think some parts are deeper than the other, so probably needs a little bit more randomness in my in my grinding when I turn the mirror and tool. Another problem I find is that grinding on this hollow plastic bucket is a horrible idea. It's it gets really really loud. The grinding itself is already quite loud, but this bucket just like amplifies the sound. And you can already see from my grinding of the first session, I started grinding on the floor uh, at the later parts, and just because this was getting too loud and it was uncomfortable. So last problem that I have is the grinding tool itself. So much of the grit is actually stuck inside the grooves, and I feel like they're not really used, they're just like once I added the sand on there and start grinding, like most of it just go go to the groove like straight away. Like it does get better as it start to fill in. So at the start, it just goes in, and then and then I'll be like grinding for like maybe like five strokes, and there are no more grits on top. And so yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe my grooves are too deep, or maybe they're too wide apart. But I'm not sure what's what's wrong. Maybe I need to add more water. I'm not sure. So I hope you like this video, and I'll try to keep on doing this for the rest of the process and tell me if you know I'm doing anything wrong or if you have any suggestions.